So one of the most iconic keyboard designs is back for a third round. Today we're taking a look at the Space 65 by Gray Studio. There are plenty of under the hood improvements in this round that I think make for a worthy update. Gray Studio sent out a prototype unit for me to review, but that will not influence this review whatsoever. So let's take a deep dive and see if this board is worth the starting price of 375 US dollars. For those that have watched the channel before, you know what time it is. So let's see how it sounds, let's see how it feels. Let's start the build. Alright, so I put a lot of effort into those B-rolls. If you enjoy the content, let me know by hitting the subscribe button below and joining the Clackbait family. Now let's get into this board. You'll know right away that you purchased something really premium when you get this box in your hand. The packaging is really well done. So here's what you'll get included with the kit. You'll get a fully assembled three-piece case, a plate of your choice, plate foam, PE foam, case foam, an LED isolating foam, insulation pad, this wild translucent PCB, daughter board with JST cable, silicone gaskets, foot pads, silicone standoffs, a really nice aluminum screwdriver with two heads that you're gonna need for the build, and all the screws. So unfortunately, I don't have round two with me to compare side by side, but here's some of the differences between round two and round three that have been noted. The change from a top mount to a gasket mount structure, they added a structural mid piece, making it a three piece board, they removed the screws from the bottom and implemented an internal screw system to hold everything together. And they went with the daughter board instead of the onboard USB-C and they centered it this time. And yes, finally they added a hot swap PCB option with this crazy translucent PCB. The hot swap PCB offers the following configurations. The design of the keyboard stays relatively the same, which is a good thing, with some modern tweaks. You can now see an accent color that goes all the way around the board, which is the mid case showing through. They got rid of the Cyber Voyager branding on the back. Overall, these are the differences I was able to tell without having an R2 on hand. But I do think that these changes are small, but give it a really clean look. So some of the specs on this case are as follows. The front height is at 18.5 millimeters. The typing angle is five degrees. The weight fully built is 2.83 pounds or 1.3 kilograms. So here's some things that you may want to know about the build but as always follow the build guide to make sure you're not missing out on some steps. So the kit comes with all the foams that you will need, but are all optional. The one piece that you should use though is this thin insulation pad just to make sure there's no contact between the PCB and the mid case during typing. Basically an added layer to protect from shorting the PCB. For my build, I only use the plate foam and this thin sheet. The gaskets actually have a unique design to them. They can be used in three different ways. You can have it to where the flat part of the silicone is sitting towards the bottom, or you can have it to where less silicone is at the bottom of the case. And the last option is to kind of mix and match. To screw the top and bottom case together, you'll need to make sure that the screws are in a magnetic screwdriver, which they do provide in the kit, just to make sure that they don't fall in during the installation, because the screws actually go through the plate PCB assembly down to the bottom case. I think this implementation is actually better than some of the other internal screw mounts that I've used in the past, as it won't interfere with any of the modifiers and cause any sound differences or fitment issues. As far as the silicone standoffs are concerned, they actually push through the back of the PCB and you'll need a tool similar to this one that I'm using here just to help pull them through the top plate. 
If you're using plate mount five pin switches, this is totally optional. I didn't use it in my build. Pro tip, before installing the middle case, install the JST cable and fish it through the opening at the bottom of the mid case. Then screw the assembly together because it's really difficult to connect the JST cable through the opening after putting together the top and the mid piece and could cause damage to it. So keep that in mind. I went through the pain so you don't have to. Okay, pros and cons time, cons first. Now, although I like the implementation of the internal screws and I think they did it really well, I think anyone who likes to experiment and tinker and try different gasket styles or want to try PE foam, for example, will have to go through an additional step to get into the board. A typical bottom screw type keyboard with a two piece case makes it much easier to do that. But I think the benefit of the mid case outweighs this con, but more on that in just a bit. Now, I'm not a fan of these little fake faux screws that they have here at the bottom of the case. I think removing these will give it a cleaner look and be less confusing for someone thinking that they can unscrew these and scuff their board up. Now the price could be a con, especially with how the industry is moving. However, the quality that you're getting here, along with the typing experience, justifiable. So pros, this board looks fantastic. I've always wanted to grab a Space 65 and this was one of those designs that really made me gravitate towards the hobby when I first started out. Even after a couple of rounds, I think the design didn't wear out at all and it's still very distinct and different from anything else on the market. I'd have to say this is the best looking 65% that I've personally owned at the moment. Another pro is the build quality. The anno on the board is really buttery smooth with no streaking or blemishes on my prototype unit. Gray Studio is known to provide quality and that doesn't change here. Really high marks on quality. The typing experience is so, so nice. I think they found a nice balance between flex and sound here. I wouldn't categorize this as a board with plenty of flex, but the bottom out experience is soft and has a bit of balance to it. The mid case implementation minimizes hollowness to almost non-existent. And the sound emanates from the board really clear and crisp. Now on this board, I'm using the red jacket switches by KNC Keys. And let me tell you guys, these are on my highly recommended list. They really don't require any lube. I've been told that before about switches that I've used before, but I've always had to go back and lube those. These legit are great stock. Highly, highly recommend them. I have a link down below with the coupon code. So once they get in the stock, definitely pick these up. So overall, I'll say it, this is the best 65% keyboard that I personally own. And once again, this is just my preference. I haven't tried every single 65% keyboard out there, so I'm sure there's gonna be contenders, but for me, this is the one. I love everything about it. The look is very clean and unique. The typing angle is very interesting at five degrees. It takes a little bit of getting used to at first, if, especially if you're coming from a six to seven degree typing angle, this is a little bit flatter, but I actually really, really enjoy typing on this. I'll be using this as my daily driver for quite some time whenever I reach for a 65% keyboard. So that's all I got guys. Do I recommend you guys jump into the group buy? If you're looking for a 65% and this is in your budget, I say definitely go for it. I'm not sure if this is going to come back around for round four. Catch you all in the next one. Peace.